or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. Appreciate you standing. You can be seated. I, I know these are familiar scriptures, but uh, stay with me. I want to give you some things this evening and try to help and encourage you tonight on this Wednesday night. Heavenly Father, we're thankful this evening for the mercy the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we do pray in His name that you'd hear our prayer and plea. Lord, we know tonight that, Lord, as we've entered in, we're privileged to be here, but, but Lord, the fact of the matter is, without you, we are nothing, and without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we know that tonight, and so, Lord, I pray that, Lord, on this midweek service, as we share in this time with this church and this pastor and his family, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd come by our way, Lord, for a few moments tonight as we gather around your word. Lord, this thought that, Lord, has encouraged us and, Lord, encouraged others, Lord, I pray, Lord, you'd use it tonight to be a help and a blessing, Lord, to these folk. Lord, if you do that, we'd be grateful, Lord. There may be somebody here tonight that's lost. Lord, on a Wednesday night, Lord, they Lord, need to hear about the Lord Jesus and the blood he shed. Lord, the gospel, Lord, that he provides to them for their salvation. Lord, I pray that, Lord, they'd be drawn, Lord, by conviction, the Holy Ghost. Lord, that you'd bring them, Lord, to yourself, and, Lord, save them by your good grace. Lord, everything you do for sinners, saint alike, we'll thank you and bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Let me make a few opening statements tonight, get our feet on the ground, and beat the butterflies back, but I, I'm mindful as we look at these verses tonight in this text, they're dealing with what we know to be the instructions about Israel's offering of the Passover lamb that had ultimately, as they would sacrifice that and offer it unto the Lord on behalf of their house and their family, it was ultimately going to result in their exodus from Egyptian bondage. And we understand the great type of redemption that is portrayed in this and how that it was brought to pass and how that they were led out by, uh, by uh, ultimately the Lord in His power. But uh, it was all surrounded and centered upon this matter of the Lamb that we read about tonight in this text. And uh, we could observe, I think, two matters that are of note tonight about their redemption and, and how it relates even to ours, and that in this offering it was to be an offering of blood. And verse number 7 said, And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And so it was an offering of blood. Without the shedding of blood, uh, there is no remission for sin. There's no redemption. There's no uh, breaking of uh, bonds and chains and sins that had plagued men. And in this, uh, in this picture of the Passover offering, we understand it was to be an offering of blood. Thank God tonight for the blood. Amen. The blood washes all their sins away. The blood, amen, is our hope and our power. And, and, uh, and we trust that tonight, this offering of blood, especially uh, that that Christ offered for you and for me. I'm interested tonight, though, in this thought or use this to get us to her thought that uh, this offering was not only to be an offering of blood, uh, but according to verse number 5, he said, Your lamb shall be without blemish. It was to be an offering without blemish. Uh, God was demanding perfection. He was demanding uh, that there be a fault-free offering offered in the Passover lamb. That if they're to be, if they're to be redeemed, 
chained, if they're to be set free, if if Egyptians hold on them is to be broken, uh, it is going to require an offering without a blemish. And what a type and a picture again of Christ not only making an offering of blood, uh, but Christ our Lamb for our salvation uh, was uh, indeed an offering without blemish. And we have 33 and a half years in this world among us and uh, and yet never one time committed one sin. Uh, no guile was found in his mouth, the Bible said. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Amen. They'd lie upon him they a man would accuse him of all kinds of things, but a man, he was an offering without blemish. A man, and we're thankful for that truth tonight. We think about uh, this matter of being without blemish when you study that phrase. Uh, that it's used here. I believe this is the first time that it's used in the Word of God. Uh, without blemish is used 95 times in 41 verses uh, in your King James Bible. And, and so this is not a small statement. It's not insignificant. It's used over and over and over in the Word of God. All but one of those references which concerns the glorified church uh, being presented to Christ without spot or without blemish are always used in regard to a lamb without blemish. And so the precedence is said in Exodus 12 and in verse number 5, amen, an offering without blemish. And I, I believe tonight that is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the perfect fulfillment of that type. Amen. He's the only one to ever fulfill that type. Amen. Been a lot of good Good men live and breathe God's air. Amen. And there's only been one that's been able to count. Amen. And make and lay hold of the clay. Amen. That he is the offering without blemish. Amen. And so this evening I I think we understand that. We've heard a lot of preaching about Amen. Christ being without blemish. Uh, but man, I know that you're gonna think, man, he's so deep and, and not really, but hey man, if there is a lamb without blemish tonight, hey man, what I'm interested in is that it stands to reset. Uh, that uh, that if there are lambs without blemish, uh, then evidently there are lambs with blemish. I know that's so deep it'll go over your head, all right? Amen. But if there's a lamb, if the Lord is emphasizing that uh, that uh, you are too, amen, go down the sheepfold and find the lamb that uh, would appear to be without blemish, bring him back, and, and for 14 days keep him up and observe him and watch him and, and examine him and make sure that he is without blemish, uh, then evidently there are lambs that indeed are blemish. Uh, when we think about this, that uh, we come to Leviticus chapter number 22. I'll, I'll read verse number 20. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall you not offer, for it uh, shall not be acceptable for you. And, and so there is this matter that uh, there are such a thing as blemished lambs that uh, we must deal with the word blemish as it is used in that text. Uh, literally means a stain. It means a defect uh, or some sort of injury that uh, would be uh, examined in uh, that lamp. Uh, this word is used to describe something that uh, would be deemed bad or something that had within it, in the Word of God, it would be used to make a connection to something that had the effects of sin or the curse of sin upon it. Amen. So when we think about the lamb without blemish, I, I believe tonight that is a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but the lamb and the blemish lamb that, uh, that Leviticus 22 deals with uh, this evening, oh, what a statement that is tonight uh, about uh, you and about me yet yeah, and about what we are and about what sin has done to you and to me. And uh, we think about this tonight, amen, how injured we can be, how stained we are, uh, 
how defective we are within ourselves and in our flesh. And uh, no doubt tonight, amen, we can draw some parallels to what we are or what we offer, amen, to this blemished lamb. And so for the Lord to help me, I, I want to preach on that thought, blemished lambs. Uh, blemished lambs. I, I want to get the third point. It's the positive point, and we'll preach there and try to help you tonight. Amen. But several applications to the fact uh, that there are blemish lambs even in our day in the hour we're living tonight. Amen. I thought about this that, uh, that I think there are some that amen, we make a connection of blemish lambs in salvation. Uh, Exodus 12, 5 is the first mention of a lamb without blemish. Uh, while 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 19 uh, is the last mention that reveals Christ to be uh, that perfect sacrifice for our sin. Uh, we're not redeemed with uh, silver and with gold. It, we're not redeemed by the traditions we've received of our fathers. But uh, Peter said, with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Amen. He is the perfect sacrifice for our sin. Amen. What he did 2,000 years ago at Calvary's Hill. Uh, my friend was perfect in the sight of God. Amen. Perfect blood, perfect offering, perfect death, perfect burial, perfect resurrection. Amen. And my friend, when all the, amen, all the plan of the gospel had been fulfilled, uh, uh, we understand that Christ is our perfect, amen, offering for our redemption. Amen. But for the last 2,000 years, what has man been doing? He's been trying to bring to God blemished lambs for salvation. Amen. I ain't got time to preach this tonight. Amen. I'm feeling pretty good. I think my toe just got on the ground. Amen. But, but what do we find? Amen. We find that when people, amen, tried to profess salvation in any other means than uh, that of Christ alone, what are they doing? Amen. They're clinging to a blemished lamb. Uh, they're clinging to something that, amen, will never amount to salvation. Uh, they're clinging to something that's stained, something that's defective, it, and something that's as injured as they themselves are. Amen. We can call some blemish lambs by name tonight. Amen. When uh, when they profess salvation uh, in water baptism, that's a blemish lamb. Amen. Good works, church membership. Amen. Your family heritage. It, amen. And, and reformation and all the things we can list tonight. Night. Amen. The people are clinging to apart from Christ. Amen. These are blemished lambs in salvation. Amen. If you're trusting tonight in anything other than Christ, Amen. We say to you tonight, Amen. It's nothing more than a blemished lamb. It'll never be accepted. Amen. It'll never get you into heaven. Amen. It'll never get you out of hell. Death. Amen. But if you'll ever put all your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed and the offering he made. Thank God tonight there is, Seth, amen, a salvation. You can lay your blemish lamb down Seth, and cling to what Jesus has provided for us. There's a blemish lamb in salvation. Number two, there's a blemish lamb we make application tonight. Amen. What I call the blemish lambs of sacrifice. Uh, it's interesting when you study the phrase without blemish, without blemish, uh, that uh, it is uh, the book that has the most references uh, to an unblemished lamb is found in the book of Leviticus. In fact, 18 times in the book of Leviticus, amen, the Lord said, bring a lamb without blemish. Bring a lamb without blemish. And wow, all of those offerings no doubt speak of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he would do. Uh, they also offer you and I a very practical insight our own relationship to God. Uh, what was God saying throughout the book of Leviticus? Amen. What he's saying is amen. Is uh, it's a book about bringing the Lord your very best sacrifice. 
Amen. And, and, and over and over, God said, if it's blemished, I won't accept it. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it's been injured, I'm not interested in it. Amen. And so the truth stands out through the book of Leviticus uh, that to offer less than our best is unacceptable to God. Amen. I thought about this, and you say, well, preacher, uh, the book of Leviticus, that's in the Old Testament. Uh, that's, uh, that's another dispensation of time. Amen. But the Apostle Paul, I think, had this same truth in mind in Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies and sacrifice holy and, and notice what he said acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and, and so tonight I think that when we're serving God uh, and that when we come to worship the Lord when we come to serve the Lord uh, that to bring God anything less than our best a man is to offer the Lord a blemish lamb that God is not interested in a man this was a problem in the days of Malachi in Malachi chapter number 1 the Lord questioned Israel and he said what are you doing and I'm paraphrasing in good hillbilly Tennessee amen the edition of the Bible amen the Lord said are you going to bring me blind lambs are you going to bring the lame to me and the Lord said why don't you try bringing that to your governor and see if your governor will accept that of your hand and the Lord said, if you wouldn't, if he wouldn't accept it, amen, and you wouldn't expect to run down and give him that, why in the world are you trying to bring me something uh, that has been blemished and is less than your best? Amen. I know it's negative. That's just a negative point. This is as negative as I'll be all night. Amen. But I do want to say this. Amen. I, after all the, amen, the unblemished lamb is done for you and I. Amen. Can I say tonight, he demands our best. Amen. He desires our best. But more than any of that, he deserves our very best. Amen. And so blemish lambs of sacrifice, blemish lambs in salvation. Amen. So now for the next two hours, I want to preach the third point, all right? Amen. And, and uh, amen. just hang with me for just a moment. I want to talk about blemish lambs uh, in the sanctuary. Blemish lambs in the sanctuary. And, uh, and uh, we'll be positive. Just hang with me now. Amen. When we read here in our text, in Exodus chapter number 12, notice with me that the Bible said, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Notice what the Lord said, Ye shall take it out from the sheep. Amen. You shall take it out from the sheep. And so this evening, when we think about this, we find uh, that there is a separation that is made. Uh, the, uh, the lamb without blemish is pulled out from the fold, and the fold is left in the pasture. Uh, the blemishes, uh, now these blemished lambs, that uh, were unacceptable for redemption, and were unacceptable for the Passover sacrifice. Sacrifice. Amen. These blemished lambs had all sorts of issues that, amen, you can look out in the flock, you could, amen, go to the fence row and look out at, amen, they'd have all sorts of issues in them. How what you'll find is that the blemishes that a lamb could have. Uh, they're mentioned in Leviticus chapter number 22. And uh, if you'll let me just humor me for a moment. Amen. Here's the issues that they can have in Leviticus 22. And in verse 22, if you want to look at it, you can. Amen. Here's what the Lord said. Blind or broken or made or having a wind, that means an open sore, a scurvy, or scabbed, ye shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. He goes on in verse 23, either a bullock or a lamb that hath anything superfluous, that means anything extra, 
anything out of the ordinary or he said or lacking in his part. So if he has anything on him or in him that that is extra or he's missing something that he ought to have. Amen. In his parts, thou mayest, uh, thou, that, that, that mayest thou offer for a free will offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. Ye shall not offer unto the Lord. He said, that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut, neither shall you make any offering thereof in your land. You say, what in the world? You're in Leviticus. It's Wednesday night. We, can't, we ain't got amen, a brain for this. Just hang with me. Listen to the list. Listen to the list of blemishes. These are the ones that are left in the fold. They're blind. Some of them are blind. Some of them are broken. Some of them are maimed. Some of them have open sores. Some of them have scurvy. Some of them are scabbed. Some of them are bruised. Some of them have been crushed. Some of them have been cut. Some of them have things they ought not to have in their life. And some of them are missing some things they ought to have in their life. And God said these are the blemishes in the blemished lambs that are left in the fold. Now, I, I thought about this just kind of observing this in my mind. Hey, Amen. When we think about these blemished lambs, they're a picture of you and I. Hey, Amen. We're blemishes. Hey, come on now. Hey, Amen. There he is in this place tonight. Hey, Amen. Some that are blind. There are some tonight you've been beat up and you're bruised and you're crushed. There are some of you lived in the world this way. Hey, Amen. And you've been beat down and more out. There are some of us tonight spiritually. And we got some things in our life we ought not to have. And some of us tonight, we're missing and some things we know ought to be there. Oh, come on now. Amen. Do we not fit this list? Amen. When we read about these Plymouth lambs, can we not identify with them? Amen. Now, I thought about this, observing this. Amen. Some of these issues were maybe hereditary. Others, we're talking about the blemishes now. Amen. Why are they blemished? Some of the issues maybe, maybe were hereditary. Others maybe were caused by their own wandering. Amen. Self-inflicted blemishes. Amen. It had been brought because they wandered from the shepherd. They wandered from the fold. They, amen. They got off the path of righteousness. Amen. They were being led in. Maybe some. Amen man had been wounded because of others had, and, and things others had done to them. Amen. But whatever the issue was, whether it amen, was hereditary and in the genes or, or self-inflicted or caused by others, amen, we can identify with these blemished lambs. Amen. In every church across America tonight, people that walk in hit, and they walk in and, and there's certain things that we struggle with that, that we struggle with because of how we grew up. There are different issues. I, I'm not making excuses. If you know anything about me and kind of preacher I have, I don't excuse sin, but I just be honest about it tonight. Hey, Amen. We all have issues, and you can blame it all on your mama and your daddy. Maybe you can blame it on yourself. Maybe you're blaming it on others. But the fact is, all of us are blemished somehow. Hey, Amen. I thought about this. Oh, you got to get this. Some blemishes stood out faster and were more recognizable maybe than others. But whether it was a public blemish or a private blemish, it was still a blemish. Now we are independent fundamental back. We're good about, hey man, we're good about uh, my friends seeing the blind and, and, and seeing the limping lamb. Hey man, the one that's all crushed up and mangled and maimed. Hey and, man, and it shows real easy. But God said, you go down the fold. Amen. And you find you a lamb that, that would appear to be suitable for a sacrifice and you bring him back and for 14 days they had to peel back the layers of the wool and look down in there in the skin 
Amen. Things that you couldn't see from a distance. God said if there's a sore down up under there at Lamb's blemish, you got to go back with the blemish group. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Boy, I think about us independent, fundamental, King James thumping Baptist, and that's what I is, and I'm proud of it. Buddy, we will, amen, we'll, amen, come into church and we'll walk the dog and trot the pony. And, amen, we'll make ourselves look real good and we'll impress everybody. Amen, we don't go here and we don't do this. And, amen, we as bad as so and so. I can't believe they come to church tonight looking like that. And, amen, if they had any spirituality about them, you know what was said? Amen, we're saying, I think I'm without blame and we're watching all the little things we can easily find. Amen. I don't mean to be negative, Brother Doug, but amen, our gossip and tongue and bad attitude, amen, our bitterness and unforgiveness is as much a blemish as anything you can see on the outside of somebody else. Amen. Boy, I wish I had a voice to scream right now. Amen. Amen. Just cause your blemishes ain't on the outside as big as somebody else's don't mean you ain't got them. Amen. A lot of Baptists they'll drown if the rain comes. You think you got it all nailed down? I got news for you. We're all blemished. Everybody here tonight is blemished some way. Amen. I thought about this. Amen. According to the, rig the, the, the rigidity, I'll call it the strictness uh, of the law and what God has, has uh, instructed here even in Leviticus 12 in the, in the verses where the Lord said you got to keep it up, you got to examine it, it and look it over outside and inside and dig around it. Amen. Listen. It only makes sense to me that if you're going to do that for 14 days, there must be more blemish lambs than there are unblemished lambs. I, I, I mean, that makes sense to me. And if I'm wrong, Brother Doug is straighten it out. Hey, Amen. I hope he do, does it after I'm gone so I don't have to be embarrassed. Hey, Amen. But it makes sense to me. Amen. That if you're going to watch something that long, eventually you're going to find something in it and say, this has got to go back to the fold. Amen. And I say tonight, there's only one unblemished lamb. Amen. Because of the strictness of the law. Amen. Because of the holiness of God's law. Amen. There's not a one of us that can stand you say, but I've been saved 55 years, 3 months, and 22 days. <laughs> Amen. I don't care how long you've been saved, how much scripture you quoted. Amen. I don't care if you're a Sunday school teacher, choir member. Amen. Maybe a preacher and listen. Amen. I don't care how many tracks you passed out. Amen. I come to remind all of us we're blemished lambs. Lord God. Amen. Inside and outside said, nope. They'll never measure up. So here's, here's my question. Here's, man, by the way, our thought is blemish lambs in the sanctuary. Amen. Blemish lambs in the sanctuary. You say, what do you mean? Amen. These lambs are left in the fold. The unblemished, the lamb without blemish is drawn away. He's led away. Amen. He's going to be the offering for sin. Amen. That leaves the rest of the sheep in, uh, in the sheepfold. Amen. Now, what did Jesus say about his church? John 10. John 10 verses 1 through 18. Amen. Christ related himself to be the shepherd. He related my friend uh, what he was providing to be the sheepfold. Amen. And he said, I'm not only the shepherd, I'm the door, I'm the porter, I'm the one that lays down my life for the sheep. Amen. He said, my sheep hear my voice, they know my voice. I know them by name. What is he doing? He is relating the sheepfold to his church. 
over there when, after the resurrection and Peter said I'm going fishing and they got out there and I won't deal with all that buddy old Peter got himself sideways he said amen the Lord came to where they were got them there on the land amen you remember what the Lord asked Peter Peter do you love me Peter said oh I love you Lord thou knowest I love you Lord said feed my lambs feed my lambs Peter, I have a sanctuary. I have a sheepfold. A man that's full of sheep. What does he do? He is relating the fact that, that you as a local New Testament church is a picture of the sheepfold of God. And everybody here tonight has been left in the fold. Everybody here tonight is blemish. Amen. Everybody here tonight is a part of the church. Amen. My, my thought is, and I'll give you three things and I'm done here in just a moment. Amen. But, but I'm interested in, uh, amen, what happens? The lamb without blemish is taken away, has his throat slid, is bled out, his blood is applied to the doorpost, and they're going to cook his flesh, and they're going to eat his flesh, and he's going to provide redemption for Israel. What happened to the blemish lamb? Give you three things. Amen, and I'm done. Number one, they were permitted to live in the fold. The unblemished lamb dies and the blemished lamb lives. I don't understand that. Amen. I don't understand that. Amen. It's that you would think they'd want to, amen, take out the ones that, amen, have the issues and have the blemishes and, and get rid of the blind and get rid of the lame and, and get rid of those that, amen, are limping around. And, uh, no, the Lord said, amen, I'm going to take the uh, lamb that is without blemish and I'm going to let all them blemished lambs live. And I say tonight, and I don't understand it all, amen, but I'm glad, amen, that when John the Baptist seen Christ walking up, amen, the banks of the Jordan River, amen, when he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taken away the sin of the world, he was saying, He's the Lamb that's come today, and the rest of us are blemished, eh? amen, he's going to lay down his life, and die, and the blemish are going to be permitted to live. Hey man, God should have killed all of us and put us in hell a long time ago. Uh, my friend, blemish lambs get to live. Hey man, blemish lambs get to live. Hey, I think about this tonight. Hey man, in John chapter number eight, the woman taken in the act of adultery. Uh, those Pharisees came and threw her down in the feet of the Lord, and they said, "She's caught, Lord. She's caught. She got blemishes." And Moses all said, she ought to be stoned. What do you got to say? Now, I'll, I'll just, yeah, man, you know the story well. You know what the Lord said? She may be blemished. Amen. You that are without sin. You know what he's saying? Anybody here unblemished? Anybody here an unblemished lamb? Is there anybody here that is a lamb without blemish? Go ahead and pick up a stone and kill her. Take your shot. And the Bible said he stooped down in the ground and won't preach on that. Amen. But one by one they began to walk away. Amen. You remember what the Lord said? He said, woman, where are thine accusers? And she looked up and she said, Lord, I have none. Amen. That girl, she was blemished. That girl had an issue. That woman, amen, was in messed up in sin. And the Lord said, neither do I condemn thee. You know what the Lord was saying? Amen. If anybody's going to die today, if anybody's going to die, amen, for what you've done, it ain't going to be you. It's going to be me. I'm the unblemished lamb that's come to die. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
That reminds you today, blemish lambs were permitted to live in the fold. Amen. Blemish lambs get to go to church. Blemish lambs get to sing in the choir. Blemish lambs get to go to the Caribbean and do great works for God. Amen. Blemish lambs get to serve the Lord. Blemish lambs get to pass out tracts. Blemish lambs get to preach the word. Blemish lambs get to teach in Sunday school. Blemish lambs get to tell the world about salvation. Blemish lambs get fed by the hand of the master. Hallelujah. We should have been killed a long time ago. We ought to be burning in hell and hell. Oh, thank God. Amen. Blemish lambs are permitted to live. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm in that number. Amen. I'm glad I'm in that number. Oh, you think you got her all together? You ain't got any blemish. Can I remind you? Amen. If you're as perfect as you think you are, if you're as perfect as you want all of us to think you is, amen, you'd have had to go on the bloody Calvary and day. Oh, thank God. Amen. Blemish lambs are permitted to live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm feeling something in my soul. Amen. Amen. I'm only going to live forever. Amen. Blemish lambs are given eternal life. Blemish lambs get the joy of salvation. Amen. Blemish lambs. Amen. They don't have to have their throat cut. They don't have to be bled out. They don't have to suffer. Thank God, Brother Samuel. Amen. Blemish lambs are permitted to live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all preach me to death. They were permitted to live in the fold. Let me say number two. Do you see it tonight? God said the lamb without blemish, he got to come out of the fold and bring him out from the sheep. There's a whole flock out there, blemish lambs. Limping. So, some of y'all, you limped in tonight, your family limped in. You was just holding each other. I'm trying to get the second point. Hey man, you on a Wednesday night, you did all you could just to get here. And the devil's jumped on your back. Hey man, and said, you all, oh, you're so messed up. Hey man, you don't deserve to go in there. And I tell you, he's right. Hey man, we don't deserve it. I don't understand it. Hey man, but there's something about, hey man, there's something about blemish lambs. At the Lord said, the blemish lamb gets to live. You come limping in. Some of y'all, man, it's so dark in your world, you're a blind lamb. You're just kind of stumbling your way through. Hey Amen. Some of you, maybe you got some kind of spiritual scurvy. Hey Amen. That's attached itself to you and you know it's there and it's, hey Amen. It's agitating you and itching you and you just, hey Amen. You're thinking, man, I just don't even know if I ought to go. And somehow you came. Can I tell you tonight? Hey Amen. The shepherd wants you to live. He wants you to live. Hey Amen. He wants you to live. Hey Amen. Join the crowd. We're all blemished. I thank God we're permitted to live. Number two, not only are they permitted to live, but blemish lambs, I, I believe tonight, I don't think it's a stretch, but Doug, and that we could say they, they were passionately loved in the fold. They were permitted to live in the fold, but they were passionate passionately loved in the fold. If you know anything about a shepherd and his sheep, the shepherd loves his sheep. Oh, we could go through the Word of God and show examples of it. Amen. When David had sinned it, and the prophet Nathan had gone down there to rebuke him, you remember he gave him the parable about a, a lamb that had been taken in. It, amen. Evidently, if it's living, that means it, it was a lamb that had some kind of blemish in it. Amen. The fact that it wasn't killed. Amen. For sacrifice and it's living with a family. Amen. Means it had some kind of blemish in it. Amen. And the, amen. Amen. And, and Nathan used that to show. Amen. How a, how a, how a lamb is loved by its master. 
And I say today, blemish lambs, they are passionately loved in the fold. Amen. It was. It is the blemish lambs. Amen. Who hear the voice of the shepherd, call them by name. Amen. It's the blemish lambs that feel the shepherd's touch. Amen. It's the blemish lambs. That, amen. When uh, they're weak, lean upon the shepherd's pussy. Amen. It's the blemish lambs that experience of the care of the shepherd upon their blemish life. Amen. We may be blemished tonight. I thank God. Amen. He don't look at us through our blemishes. Amen. He don't, my friend, find us ugly and distasteful. Amen. He doesn't reject the blemish lambs. I thank God. He bears them upon his shoulder. He knows every and blemish they have. Uh, he knows where you're at tonight. Uh, amen. You say, if you knew what I what shape has in. Uh, amen. Let me just be honest. Uh, amen. If you knew the shape I was in a lot of times, uh, Amen. You'd probably get up and walk out on me and say, that sorry, low down, let better. I ain't even gonna hear him preach. How can he get up there and try to preach and be that blemished? I just tell you tonight, he knows every blemish I have. He knows my good days and my bad days, my ups and my downs. And God, he knows every step I take. He knows every limp I have. Amen. He knows every day I'm blind. He knows every day I'm all stabbed up. I thank God I'm glad. I can tell you tonight, I am passionately loved in his fold. Amen. He loves you like you are. Hallelujah. So, so and so don't love me anymore. That's one thing you'll never, you'll never be able to say about the shepherd. Amen. Amen. Your children may fall out with you. Your parents may walk off and abandon you. Amen. There may be Christians that, amen, turn their back and go another way and say, oh, they're too messed up. And I'm glad there's a shepherd in glory. Amen. He passionately loves blemish lambs. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. A love that will not be divided. A love, my friend, that, amen, a, a flame of love that will never be quenched. Amen. I'm glad tonight that we're in the church, we're in the fold, and the flock of God. Amen. We're the shepherd that loves all of us, even with the blemishes we have. Amen. You're loved tonight, child of God. You're loved tonight. He cares for you. Number three, and I'm done. They're not only permitted to live in the fold, passionately loved in the fold. I want to say tonight, they were patiently led in the fold. See, lambs in the fold got to be led from green pasture to green pasture to still water to the pasture again to, amen, this place and that place because the shepherd knows what the little lambs are going to need. And can I remind you tonight, their blemishes are known very well by the shepherd. Amen. So that he knows how and when to help them make it in spite of their issues. Amen. He knows when ones are lagging a little bit behind. He knows that little lamb with the limb that, amen, it can't climb that mountain maybe as strong and as fast that, and as well as some of them other sheep can. That, and so what does he do? He just patiently leads the little limping lamb. That, amen. That lamb is blind in one eye. Amen. And begins to bear off course. That, amen. Begins to get in danger. Amen. The shepherd knows how to. Amen. Get back over here, little lamb. Amen. What's he doing? Somebody says, Amen. What's he doing? I tell you what he's doing. Amen. Brother, he is a leading that lamb patiently. Is there anybody in here knows what I'm talking about? You ever feel yourself? You know you're being in you. Amen. You don't even know how bad, but the Lord. Amen. How many times does he just give you a little. You don't want to go over there. Yeah. Amen. 
Anybody else here feel like everybody else is outrunning you sometimes? Amen. You're a lag in my head. Amen. Is there anybody here today that knows when you feel that way? And the shepherd comes to where you are and say, I know you're struggling. I know that you're weak. I know you can't take another step. And he pick you up on his arms. Amen. And march you a little while. Ain't you glad today? We got a shepherd that patiently leads us. Oh, I'm glad. He didn't just say, now I'm going to let him live and I'll love him, but I'm going to let him make it on his own. Oh, ain't you glad he didn't do that? Hey man, I listen. I had a, hey man, I had a messed it up a long time ago. I thank God the shepherd, hey man, patiently leads his sheep. Hey man, according to Psalm twenty-three, he leads us. I like this in the paths of righteousness. Hey man, don't think you can use your blemish, your issue, as an excuse. Don't think this message is about, oh, good, I get to go live any old way I want to this week. I got an issue. Oh, no. He going to patiently lead you. Come on, lamb. No, don't go that way of the world. Oh, no. Come this way. Come this way, little lamb. He'll get you walking in a path of righteousness for His name's sake. Hey, His name's sake. His, not so you can get down there and be a little lamb and go, woo, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's all for His name's sake. Because about the time, preacher, I hate to even admit this, you think, man, I can't believe I put Him up there. About the time I think I get her all nailed down, I woo, everybody look at me. All of a sudden, I'm way out of line somewhere in left field, and the Lord's got to come get me and bring me back again. I'm glad you say, does he patiently lead? I can't tell you how many times, time after time after time. He said, no, we ain't going to go that way. Come on, let better. Come on, I know you're limping. Hold on. I love you, little lamb, let better. You go on now. Uh, Woo, hallelujah. According to the Word of God, I ain't got time to deal with this. I, I got to quit. According to the Word of God, He's perfected your past. That's why when you have blemishes tonight, He can still love you because He has perfected all that that's been in the past. You'll read about that in Hebrews 10, 24. Amen. Perfected, past tense, forever. Ephesians 4, 12, He is perfecting us practically tonight. 1 Peter 5, and in verse number 10, there's a promise, perfection that is to come, amen, in which we will be made perfect. This reminds you, one of these days, all your limping's going to be done. I'm talking about He's patiently leading us. Where's He leading us? Right now on the paths of righteousness. But there's an end goal in sight. And the shepherd's going to get us all there. Hallelujah. When we cross through to the other side, all the blemishes fade away at the gate. It won't be another blinded day. It won't be another limping day. It won't be another scurvy day. It won't be another day we've been crushed. It won't be another bruise. It won't be another blemish. Thank God. We'll be made in the image of our Savior. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for letting us come this way. Lord, I've enjoyed, Lord, just trying to preach. And Lord, I thank you last 10 or 15 minutes, Lord, feel like you've let us try to be a help. And Lord, we bless you for that. And Lord, have thine own way, we do pray. Help the people of God. And Lord, I pray they'd be encouraged tonight, though they're blemished. Lord, they rejoice in that they've been permitted to live. Lord, that though we're blemished, Lord, we can rest assured we're passionately loved in spite of that. That, Lord, though we're blemished, you are still patiently leading us on. 
Lord, we look forward to that blessed day the promise of the Lord comes to pass. This robe of flesh and all its blemishes we drop and we rise. Lord, we get to go be where Jesus is and live in His very image. What a day that's going to be. And we bless You, Lord, for the hope we have in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.